Good evening, good evening. Greetings and blessings to all. Welcome back to Blitzball Champ Gaming here on the YouTube the Tube. I'm your host, Blitzball Champ Jason Ingram. So, wanted to talk about a little bit of gaming news. Um, what the heck is up with Microsoft? As four more studios just got shut down. So yeah, gonna talk about that. And then I wanted to give my take and my thoughts on the recent Adam Sessler shutting down on Twitter or X and pretty much deactivating his account and just give my whole overall take of just a lot of the stuff behind his meltdowns and whatnot. But um, before we get started, speaking of video games, be sure to check out Game Beauty for some awesome video game themed makeup and cosmetic products. Uh, the link is in the description and if you're going to be doing some shopping, don't forget to use the promo code BLITZBALL underscore CHAMP, all in caps, and you can get 10% off of your order. So be sure to use that promo code and happy shopping. Okay, Microsoft. Now, a good long while back, I want to say at least about a year or maybe two ago, Microsoft was, had just been ramping up acquiring studios, left, right, up, down, side to side. But even in the midst of all that, where are all the games? Where are all the AAA titles? Where are all the, the Xbox exclusives? Like, what's the deal? What's the deal? Well, come to learn today, Xbox is shutting down a handful of studios. Um, some of these include uh, Redfall developer Arcane Austin and uh, Tango Gameworks, which is the studio behind Ghostwire Tokyo, which I still got to play. Um, I got that game for free when I got my graphics card uh, a year or so ago. But yeah, shutting down four studios, um, checking out this article courtesy of GameSpot.com, um, says Xbox executive Matt Booty sent out a company-wide email detailing upcoming studio layoffs. Um, so Arcane Austin will be closing <coughs> and Redfall um, will release its most uh, Redfall's most recent update what is officially its last um, as development comes to a close. Uh, Redfall, um, if I remember correctly, is that co-op va like vampire hunting game, if I remember correctly. Apparently the game didn't do that well. game didn't do that well. Word is that it was very, very buggy and just overall unstable. I never got a chance to play it, but... I did see it discounted a number of different occasions, but <clears throat> development will come to a close. The servers will remain online, and those that purchase premium editions of the game will be eligible to receive credit. Um, and then you also have Tango Gameworks, which is the studio behind games like Hi-Fi Rush, Ghostwire Tokyo, The Evil Within. Um, they confirmed actually on their X account slash Twitter. Um, but yeah, they're shutting down. But their titles will still be available for purchase. Um, you also have Alpha Dog Games and Roundhouse Games. Um, apparently Roundhouse Games was the developer behind Mighty Doom. Or excuse me, that's Alpha Dog Games. And then uh, Roundhouse Games... Uh, was founded in 2019, which will be merged with ZeniMax Online Studios, which I believe is the team behind uh, the Elder, Str Elder Scrolls games, because these are all under the Bethesda umbrella as well. So, sad. Really, really sad. But it just, it makes me wonder, like, 
What are they doing? It's like they're Microsoft a while back was just one after another just acquiring all these studios and then turn around and these studios are closing down and there's layoffs and just you know and and the thing is Microsoft has been spending loads and loads and loads of money acquiring these studios and like doing partnerships and it's just it's like it's all backfiring. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, we, we rarely see much for Xbox exclusives, you know? And it's just, you would think we would see more of these with all the studios they're acquiring, but it's like, I don't know. Like, it makes me wonder, what, what what's Phil Spencer doing? Like, I mean, with the kind of decisions he's making, like, what's, what's the deal? Like, I don't, I don't know what to say. Like, and as a matter of fact, I came across this article on Kotaku, which I'll also link in the description. Says it's stop. It's it's titled it's stop. It's time to stop giving Xbox boss Bill Sp Spencer a pass. Under his leadership, many have lost their jobs and fewer games have made it out the door. Yep, pr pretty much. Pretty much. And I guess he's just, like, making some really bad decisions. Um, but Because pretty much, Phil Spencer has pretty much been the main face of Xbox since, pretty much since the Xbox One. Um, and it says here... Uh, as a matter of fact, it says here in the article, um, and I quote, Since the era of the Xbox One, Spencer has been the face of Xbox, consistently saying things that make his devout Xbox fans praise him and avoiding as much negative press as possible. He'll tout the merits of emulation and game preservation while acknowledging that Xbox could do more, but really has no plans to. Um... In November 2021, when Activision found itself in hot water following a Wall Street Journal report claiming then-CEO Bobby Kotick allegedly had knowledge of the toxic behavior at his company, um, which talking about Blizzard, um, Spencer was one of the biggest voices in the video game industry speaking out against the Call of Duty publisher. Um, or, I'm sorry, yeah, Activision. I'm sorry, I don't know why I said Blizzard. Um... This type of behavior, well, then then again, they did become Activision Blizzard. So, yeah, getting my words mixed, mixed up. Uh, please forgive me. This type of behavior has no place in our industry. Spencer claimed in an email, an SEC filing revealed in 2022 that a few days after the Wall Street Journal story was published, Spencer called Kotick and started working on the deal to buy Activision. Um... And then, of course, in 2020, oh, yeah, this was also after they got Bethesda. Um, let's see. While Spencer may say wonderful things about the creativity and letting his teams make what they want to make, the reality is that if those bets don't pay off, and even when they do, the teams are at risk of getting gutted or shut down. All while Microsoft becomes one of the few companies in history to be worth three trillion dollars. Let me read that. The, let me read that amount again. Three trillion dollars. Wow. Under his leadership at Xbox, thousands of people were laid off not long after the company spent billions of dollars to acquire Bethesda and Activision. Studios have been closed, games have been canned, DLC has been canceled, and Xbox's first party output has continued to be feast and famine. In 2022, the company practically had nothing. In 2023, it had some stuff to show, 
And so far this year, it's been pretty quiet. Um, and the thing is, Phil Spencer's been running Xbox for at least a decade. At least a decade. Um, as a matter of fact, in 2023, 10,000 cuts at Microsoft. Then so far this year, just right after closing in on the deal with Activision, 2,000 were cut. I mean, what the heck are they doing? Like, I just, I just really feel like Phil Spencer needs to be held accountable. Because apparently this, this is not a good look. This is not a good look. Um... Let's see, since 2014, Spencer has been the main person at Xbox Helm. While his biggest supporters might want to blame the economy, PlayStation, or regulators, at the end of the day, he's making calls that aren't helping his staff or gamers. Sure, his Game Pass creation and the push to expand it have been rightfully applauded by many, which I do have Game Pass, so I can, I can relate to that. Game Pass has been pretty big since it was born, so... I can see how Game Pass can be, you know, the big, huge, positive thing to speak on about Xbox as a whole. Because, like I said, I, I have Game Pass. I've had it for a couple of years now, so I get it. Um, It was a genuine sea change for the industry and did indeed bring more games to people. But beyond that one victory, the rest of Spencer's run as Xbox top boss has been a series of layoffs, delays, apologies, poor sales, and mergers meant to feed Game Pass, but which instead have seemingly cost a lot of people their jobs. And that's, that's the unfortunate bad look about it. You know what I mean? I mean, when it's costing people jobs and studios shutting down, I mean, that one victory with Game Pass just, it's, it's not enough. It's not enough. But, like, I mean, it's, it's just, it's not a good look. But, yeah, I definitely believe that really the, the, the Xbox fans and just the video game community in general should really start holding Bill Spencer accountable. Dude's been making some bad decisions, you know? And it's just, with these studios getting, getting laid off, I mean, it's already bad enough what's been happening with, with Activision Blizzard behind Overwatch 2. And just, but what what had been going on previously? Microsoft scooping up all these, all these studios, only for it to, you know, see studios under them get shut down and layoffs happen. And it's just, it's not a good look. It's really not a good look. So, I'm really hoping that. They either need to figure something out or somebody's going to have to step in and take over Phil Spencer's leadership role because he's just, he's not cutting it. He's not cutting it. And it's the consequences from that. The evidence is there. So, I mean... I mean, we'll, we'll see... We'll see what happens, but uh, but yeah, we'll see what happens. But just really rough time uh, with these studios closing down and men, many, many, many people losing their jobs. So you know, I hope and pray that uh, each one of them. Uh, are able to score new jobs and get back on their feet and continue to 
you know, do what they enjoy and take care of their families and all that. Because, you know, it's, it's tough when you see that happen. It's really, really tough. You know, some really good, good friends of mine, you know, that's happened to. And, you know, it's rough. It's really, really rough. It's happened to me. So, hopefully, hopefully they can get back on their feet and just Phil Spencer and Microsoft can, can make some better decisions. And, like I said, with, with the games, I mean, like I said, really don't see much for Xbox exclusives. And it's just... It just looks weird being that they've, you know, had acquired so many of these studios along the way. So that's all I can really say. But hopefully things will get better. You know, they'll have to rethink some of their decisions. And hopefully maybe they can turn some things around. It's probably going to take time, but that's all I can really say. Um, and now to switch gears, switch gears to Adam Sessler. So, apparently, it was brought to my attention, uh, because, you know, a good number of months ago, after everything went down with how unhinged he's become, I ended up unfollowing him on, uh, Twitter, because, like, I just, I lost a lot of respect for him. I know he was a big name in the, the gaming industry. Like I said, I, I used to watch a lot of X play. You know, I was a fan of him, Morgan Webb. I was I was on board with the whole Tech TV, G4 TV. I watched a lot. I enjoyed a lot of it. Um, I know G4 TV tried to make a comeback. Failed. I mean... All I can say is great effort, but like I said before, nostalgia can only carry you so far. And they found that out the hard way. But, you know, it was it was a nice effort, I guess you could say. Even though I don't think they even lasted a whole year. But um, once that all went down, Adam Sessler just, he took the filter off and just became completely unhinged. And, you know, I'm not going to repeat any of the stuff that he said because it's very, very explicit. But just, it got to the point where this dude, he let his hate show. His hate for gamers, his hate for, you know, Trump supporters, his hate for just so much and he just he let it all out even to the point where he even wished harm on his own family members like who does that who does that like I really just come to the conclusion that he just became very very broken and just hasn't been able to heal from it. But right now, he, he seems to be a very broken person. And, you know, I, f I feel for him. I really feel for him because I know a lot of people have turned against him for understandable reasons. And just, I don't know, like coming out with the whole... You know, I've never liked video games or gamers or whatnot. You know, I just was there to, to get a paycheck, which I which honestly I think it's I think that's absolute bullcrap. But you know, the things that he said to others and just I remember seeing a lot of the arguments he's had on social media and just like you know, it just goes to show, you know. People watch you. You know, I especially, I use myself as an example. I'm in front of the camera. I have my own channel. You know, that's one of the things. You know, you got to be yourself and know that others are watching. You know what I mean? Others are watching. They see what you say. They see what you do. And you got to, you got to really be careful sometimes. You got to really be careful. One second. 
but but yeah, you have to really be careful, you know, and just. And one thing I will say is, social media can really bring out the worst in people. If if you let it, it could really bring out the worst in people. And you know, I just I feel for Adam Sessler because you know I used to have so much respect for him. I mean, he got to do a lot of things. I mean. He was a co-host of X Play, and even before that, like when it was extended play, you know, he was the man. He was hosting a lot of this. Got a chance to do stuff like cover the Tokyo Game Show, which, you know, the O three, I believe it was O three, O two or O three, X Play Tokyo Game Show coverage. That was like one of my favorite X Play episodes, next to when they did a review of Virtual Fighter Four Evolution, which they gave a five out of five. You know, like, and just him getting the opportunity to do interviews, like, with Adam West and Jet Li. Like, I was like, he is living his best life. But I think a big part of it, though, was, one, I think Trolls got to him. I think the, the failure of the relaunch of G4 may have got to him. Um, when he originally got fired, probably got to him, which I can understand. You know, it's it's never fun, you know, when you lose a job, when you get laid off, fired, whatnot. It's never fun. So, I don't know if it was just one of the things that just so much happened and just all boiled over because he never really was able to face through it and deal with it and then just all of a sudden the whole bomb just went off and he just went unhinged on social media and just it's not a good look really not a good look and um, I just really hope if you ask me probably should get some therapy I think I think you should get some therapy because I mean he just let so much hate out and you know said some very horrible things really horrible things whether it's to strangers or about his family or just you know it's turned against the gamers turned against fans of his and he just took the filter off and just went in whether it's about gaming, gamers, politics, like, he just went completely unhinged. And, you know, it's sad to see. Like I said, I know I haven't followed him for a number, number of months, because like I said, it was like maybe back in, maybe back in October or maybe even September of last year that I stopped, that I unfollowed him. But like, you know, I see all these clips like on YouTube about them and you know sometimes I'll look back at old X-Play episodes that I enjoyed and just really funny clips but um, I really do hope he gets the help that he needs that he he gets healed especially mentally um, and like I said have no idea what the dude is going through I mean that's that's one thing what many may post on social media is one thing. Behind that could be a totally different realm. They could be going through something totally different. But, I don't know. But, if anything, it, it looks like he, he pretty much rage quit Twitter. He rage quit Twitter. And, I mean, it is what it is. I understand that some people, like... When a lot is getting to you, sometimes you got to deactivate, step away. Do I think he'll be back on Twitter or social media? Maybe. But with a lot that he's said and done, do I see him ever getting back into the gaming industry in some sort of capacity? Nah, probably not. Because I don't, I don't see others taking it too well. I really don't, and and it, it's understandable. It's understandable, but you know he could have really, really burned a lot of bridges. You know, 
But like I said, I just, if anything, you know, I don't hate the guy. You know, I don't hate anybody. But I've lost a lot of respect for him, for a lot of the stuff he said and just how he carried himself. Um, and if anything, I just, I just hope he, you know, gets the help he needs. I hope he can get healed and find peace in his life um, and can hopefully be happy, content going forward. But yeah, if you ask me, I, I think there's a lot of hurt there to go along with the hate. I, I, I think he's just right now a very broken individual, which I can understand. You know, we've all been broken in some way, shape or form. And some may have a harder time overcoming certain things versus others. I mean, we're all different in that way. So, it's understandable. But, you know, I, I hope and pray that the guy gets help, that he finds peace, and that he'll eventually, you know, as soon as possible, be in a much happier place. Um, that's really what I, I hope for him, but at the end of the day, it's up to him. At the end of the day, it's up to him. But I think this, you know, him being off of, I think him being off of Twitter, I think is, is the right move for now. And I think he just needs to focus on bettering himself, healing and whatever he's going through, working towards overcoming that. That's all I can really say. But anyway, that's it for this video. Um, don't forget to check out Game Beauty. And like I said, uh, those articles, the Kotaku article and GameSpot article, I will put in the description. Let me know y'all's thoughts. Uh, how are y'all feeling about the recent layoffs, the, the um, studios closing uh, by Xbox, Microsoft? And what are y'all's thoughts on Adam Sessler and him quitting Twitter, him becoming unhinged and just the whole meltdown? And yeah, would love to get your thoughts and opinions on these. And don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell while you're at it. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. For Blitzball Champ Gaming here on the U to the Tube, my name is Jason Ingram. Hope y'all have a blessed evening, and I will see y'all in the next video and or live stream. Take care. Peace out.